Welcome, brothers and sisters, to Praying Through the Psalter, a brief daily meditation upon the great prayer songs of the Bible. Today, this is devotional 125, and we continue our uh, work, our prayer, through the great Psalm 119. Today, we are reflecting on Psalm 119, verses 29 through 44. Verses 29 through 44. As you turn your Bibles with me to the psalm, I remind us of how we chiefly understand the Psalter. First, we say that the psalms are the prayers of God himself to his children on earth, that they become our prayers to be returned to him by faith and worship. Secondly, the Psalter teaches us how to pray and what to pray for. And thirdly, every psalm is messianic, that is, it reveals our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Messiah. We continue uh, to make our way prayerfully through the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 119. As we said, as at, initially as we started this time with this great psalm, it has rarely gotten the attention it deserves. It's very length, it's very um, uh, honoring of the Word of God, calls us to pay great attention to Psalm 119. Um, in the past, Many of the great saints of faith have found this psalm in particular to be life-giving and life-guiding. Turn with me to Psalm 119, in, beginning with verse 129. Again, we take the psalm two sections at a time. Let me prayerfully read this section, beginning with verse 129, and then stop and we can think about it for a moment. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me, be gracious to me, as is your way with those who love your name. Keep steady in my steps according to your promise, and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Redeem me from man's oppression, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your law. This section of Psalm 119 reminds us of, of how much the psalmist loves the Word of God. He longs for the Word of God. He holds on to the precepts, the Torah, the teaching, the commandments of the Lord. And because he loves the word of God so much, it causes him to weep over those who do not. That really speaks to me today, and I hope it speaks to you as well, that our love for the word of God um, is, is to become so great in our hearts that we that we weep, that we, are, that we are brought to great sadness for those who do not love the Word of God, for those who ignore or reject the Word of God or ridicule it. And out of that weeping and that sadness for those who are missing out on the beauty and the power of the Word of God, it would then motivate us to be more proactive in our sharing of the Word, of our faith with those people, that they too would come and know what we know of the power and the life-sustaining gift of the Word of God. You know, any time that we have something that we really love and has been a great blessing in our lives, we of course want others to know that too. We want our family, our friends, even strangers, to, to know about this blessing that's been so important to us because we want them to be blessed. I pray that the Word of God can become so important in our lives that, that we then are motivated to do all that we can that others may also know its blessing. And then we move into the next section of the psalm, beginning with verse 137. Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your rules. You have appointed your testimonies and righteousness in all faithfulness. My zeal consumes me because my foes forget your words. Your promise is well tried and your servant loves it. 
I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is righteous forever, and your law is true. Trouble and anguish have found me out, but your commandments are my delight. Your testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. So we just said in the previous section that the word of God was so important to the psalmist that he weeps over those who find it, um, who, who reject it or, or find it less than important, as so many in our world today do. And so why is the word of God so important? Because the word of God is righteousness to us because the Lord is righteous. Listen again to verse 137. Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your rules. As the Lord is righteous and true and beautiful and life-giving, so is his word beautiful and true and life-giving. In other words, we cannot separate God from the word of God. They are inseparable. The word of God is righteous because the word comes from God himself who is righteous. And of course, finally, the, the, the revelation of Scripture is that the Word of God himself is the Messiah, Jesus our Lord. And so because Jesus is righteous, all of his words from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation, is righteous. That's why the Bible is our authority. That's why the Bible guides our lives and um, our faith. That's why the Bible is infallible. That means it cannot fail us. That's why the Bible is inerrant, which means that ultimately there is nothing wrong about the Bible, that, that everything fits together beautifully and perfectly and truly. So we don't worship a book. We worship the Lord, but we understand that the book, the Word of God, comes from the Lord. And because God is righteous, His Word is righteous, and the two are inseparable. So have confidence, brothers and sisters. Have confidence in the Word of God. Know that as you read and pray through the Psalms and all of Scripture, you are reading uh, the very heart of God revealed to mankind through the authors of Scripture. And once you understand that, you can't help but be motivated to share the Word of God with those all around you, especially those who have rejected it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his whole countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.